Hi there, and welcome to TechPlower. You've just got your brand new Apple Watch Series 5, and you need some help setting it up. You came to the right place. I'm here to help. To make it easier for you to jump to specific sections of the video, I've time-coded the video and put it into the description below. So let's start on how to pair your Apple Watch to your iPhone. First, you of course have to turn your Apple Watch on by holding the side button until the Apple logo appears. The watch will take some time booting up. I've already turned my Apple Watch on. When your Apple Watch has turned on, you should unlock your iPhone and bring it close to the watch. The watch will detect the phone and show you the pairing pop-up on the screen. Sometimes this takes a while, as it did in my case. Here you simply click the continue button to start the pairing process. Now a fancy image appears on the Apple Watch and a rectangle on the iPhone's display. Now you should move the iPhone over the Apple Watch and match the Apple Watch inside the rectangle on the screen and keep it there until the iPhone recognizes the code in the image. At this point, the initial pairing has been made and you can choose to set the Apple Watch up from a backup or set it up as a new Apple Watch. Let's first set it up as a new Apple Watch. I will go through how to set it up using a backup later in the video. Just check the time code in the description. Next up, you should choose whether you want to use the watch on your left or right wrist. I have my watch on my right wrist, so I'll select right here. Usually, this step does not take a long time, but for some reason it did in my case. Since I reset my watch without removing the activation lock, I have to enter my Apple ID and password here to activate the watch. You won't need to perform this step with a brand new watch. From here you simply click the return button on the iPhone keyboard to continue or the next button at the top. Now you have to choose the orientation of the watch, that is on which side you want the digital crown to be, on the bottom or at the top. You are of course not physically moving the digital crown, you are simply deciding in what orientation the watch will sit on your wrist. Let's select on the top here and then tap the continue button. Then we have the terms and conditions that we need to agree upon to continue and we can simply click the agree button at the bottom to continue. Now we have to wait while the iPhone signs in and verifies your Apple account. This might take some time as you can see. Next step is to enable Siri. But in my case Siri cannot be enabled because it's not available in Icelandic. But I can activate it in another language when the watch has been set up. So here I simply click OK. But in your case, if Siri is available in your language, you will get an Enable button. The next screen is simply information on settings that the iPhone and the Apple Watch might share, such as Location Services, Find My iPhone and more. Here you can simply click the OK button. The next step is to create a passcode for your watch to make it more secure. You can choose to skip this step but I highly recommend not skipping it. You can add a long passcode or a four-digit passcode, and that is what I'm going to do. So I click the Create Passcode button. Now a number pad appears on the Apple Watch where you should create your four-digit passcode. For simplicity, I will use 1234. But as you can see, the Apple Watch doesn't like that, but I will use it anyway by tapping the Use Code button. You should definitely use some different code than that. To verify the code you just created, you have to re-enter it. Let's move the focus to the iPhone again. Now you can choose whether the Apple Watch should automatically check for software updates or if you want to do it manually. I recommend having it automatic, so you always have the latest security updates. So here I simply tap Continue. Since my Apple Watch is a Nike edition, I'm introduced to the Nike Run Club and I'm informed that the Nike Run Club app will be installed on my watch. So here we simply click continue. If Apple Pay is available in your country, you will get the option here to set it up on your watch. But you can also set it up later via the Apple Watch app on your iPhone. Let's click continue and set it up. Since I already have Apple Pay on my iPhone, the process is really simple. I can simply select the cards I want to add. You also get the option here to set up a new card. In my case, I select both my credit card and debit card and click continue. 
Then we have to enter the CVC security code found on the back of your card and click the next button. Now we have to accept the terms and conditions to use Apple Pay by clicking the agree button and then wait for the card to be set up. The next step is to verify your card via your bank. In my case, I get the option to do that via text message or phone call. But since this verification can differ between banks, I will skip this step for now. Then I go through the same process with the second card, add the CVC number, accept the terms and conditions, and skip the verification step. Now we get some information about emergency SOS and fall detection. Emergency SOS can be triggered by holding down the side button, and the fall detection can detect when you have a bad fall and automatically initiate an emergency call. The only option here is to click the continue button. The next screen is simply information, telling us that we can have different clock faces on our Apple Watch. So here we simply click the continue button. Now we have the option to install all the apps you have on your iPhone that have an Apple Watch companion app to your Apple Watch. Or we can decide to do that later. Since I have a lot of apps on my iPhone, I'll skip this step for now. Now the Apple Watch starts syncing with your phone and the long wait begins. You can of course use your iPhone while this sync is going on and the Apple Watch will ping you when it's finished. Let's speed things up a little bit. While you wait for the sync to finish, you get some information on how to use your Apple Watch on your Apple Watch. If you tap the display option, you get some information about that you can tap to select and swipe to scroll or move. You can also firmly press the screen force touch to get additional options in some apps. Then you can click done and select the digital crown option, where you are informed that you can press the digital crown for example to go back to the watch face. Press and hold the button to talk to Siri and turn the digital crown to scroll. Then you can click done again and check out the side button information. Clicking it once will show the dock with your open or favorite apps. Double click it to use Apple Pay or hold it down to initiate an emergency call. The watch is still syncing with the iPhone, so let's wait some more. While the watch was syncing, I was required to sign in with my Apple ID to verify my app purchases in the App Store. So I'll click the password button and luckily I can click the keyboard button and enter the password on my iPhone instead of having to swipe it in on the watch. When the password has been entered and return tapped on the keyboard, the sync can continue. Finally, the sync is finished after about 13 minutes in total, and the watch is finally ready to use. The iPhone shows you a little bit more information on the Apple Watch app, we can simply tap OK to close that. Now, we can see that my Apple Watch Series 5 Nike Edition has been successfully paired to my iPhone. As the final step on the watch, you simply need to press the digital crown and the default Nike watch face will appear in my case, since this is the Nike edition watch. In the beginning of the setup process, the pairing pop-up appeared on my iPhone. But what can you do if this pairing pop-up does not appear? Don't worry, you can always go into the Apple Watch app on your iPhone and pair it manually. So let's do that. So we tap the Apple Watch app and in there we can click the button Pair New Watch. Then we get the same view as before, where we should place the image on the Apple Watch inside the rectangle on the screen. It can take a little while for the iPhone to recognize the image. There it goes. In this case, we are going to set the watch up from a backup instead of as a new watch. So we tap the Restore from Backup option. Here we see all the available backups I have and we can still decide to set up as a new watch, but to restore from backup, we simply find the one we want to use, tap it, and then tap continue. We have the terms and conditions, and we simply click the agree button to continue here. Now we wait for the iPhone to sign in to the Connect Apple account. This setup process might take a little bit longer than when setting the watch up as a new watch, since it is now retrieving the backup data Let's speed things up a little. Now we have the same as before, enabling Siri, or in my case information that Siri is not available in my language and will therefore be disabled. So simply click OK here. 
In your case, you might have an enable button here instead, if Siri is available in your language. The next screen is simply some information about shared settings, such as location services, find my iPhone and more. We can simply tap OK on that. Even though we are restoring from backup, we have to set a passcode for the watch. It is not part of the backup, so we tap create a passcode. Now the display is upside down, because I usually have the digital crown at the lower left, and that setting is now coming from the backup. So let's put the iPhone down and enter a new passcode on the Apple Watch. The watch will complain again about my simple passcode, but in this case I will ignore that and tap use code. Then I have to re-enter the code to verify it. Now we get the option on how the software should be updated. And we want to keep the watch up to date, so we simply tap continue here. We get the same information about the Nike Run Club as before, since I have the Nike version of the Apple Watch, and here we simply tap continue. Now we get the option to set up Apple Pay, but since we did that in the setup process for our new watch, we simply skip that here by tapping the setup later in the Apple Watch app. As in the previous setup process, we get information about emergency SOS and fault detection, so we can simply click continue here. Of course, we also get information that we can use different clock faces on the Apple Watch, and we just tap continue to move forward here. Now we just relax and wait for the watch to be properly synced, and this time around it will take even longer than before, because now we are storing all the settings from the backup and installing all the apps that are included in the backup. In the middle of the sync process, I have to enter the password for my Apple account to download all the apps to the watch. Then we can relax again while we wait for the sync to finish. Now the sync is finally finished. It took around 18 minutes this time around. It of course depends on how much data and apps you have backed up. On the iPhone screen, you have a welcome message with some basic information on the Apple Watch app. If you click OK, we can see that the Apple Watch is now properly paired to the iPhone. On the Apple Watch, the only thing left is to press the digital crown, and with some fancy animation, the clock face appears that I had set up when I backed up the watch. Now you can start enjoying using your new Apple Watch. Now I have shown you two ways of pairing your Apple Watch, but how do you unpair it? You can either do it through the Apple Watch itself, or via the Apple Watch app. Be aware, when unpairing the Apple Watch through the Apple Watch, the activation lock will kick in when you set up the watch again. This means that you have to log in with your Apple account next time you pair the watch. This is good to have in mind if you are resetting the watch to sell it or give it to someone else. So let me first show you how you unpair your watch through the Apple Watch itself. First you have to unlock your Apple Watch by entering your passcode. Then you press the digital crown and tap the settings option. After that, you tap the general option and scroll all the way down to the bottom and tap the reset option. There, you have the option to erase all content and settings, which will erase everything from your Apple Watch and prepare it for repairing. So we'll tap that option and have to confirm the action by entering our passcode. Then we get a warning that all data will be erased and that activation lock is still active, as mentioned before. To continue, we simply scroll down to the bottom and tap the Erase All option. Now we can just relax and wait for the Apple Watch to erase all data from the watch and restart itself. After only a few minutes, the Apple Watch is ready to be paired again. If you want to deactivate the activation lock, you can unpair the Apple Watch via the Apple Watch app on your iPhone. You simply open the Apple Watch app and select the watch on the first screen. There you see all the watches that are paired to the iPhone, and we tap the info icon behind the watch we want to unpair. There we have the option to unpair Apple Watch, and we will tap that. Before we can continue, we get a warning that you will have to pair the Apple Watch again to be able to use it. Since we are quite sure we want to continue, we simply click the Unpair option. Now we have to enter the password for our Apple account to deactivate the activation lock. When we've entered the password, we tap the Unpair button, then we can see both on the iPhone and the Apple Watch 
that the unpairing has started. Now we can just relax for a while until the Apple Watch finishes the unpairing process. It shouldn't take too long. See, the Apple Watch has been unpaired and it simply has to finish restarting. The Apple Watch that you still see on my iPhone screen is my old Apple Watch, not this new Nike edition here. That one is no longer paired to the iPhone. It's taking its time to restart. But now it has finished and is now ready to be paired again. So these were the steps to pair and unpair your Apple Watch. As you saw, it takes a while to pair it, but unpairing is a breeze. I really hope this video will be helpful when you have to pair or unpair your own Apple Watch. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share. See you in my next video.